Olivia. Uh, come on in. Lillian Forster. She's the ticking clock. Mm -hmm. If Andrew doesn't recant before she publishes, that's it. Game over. I can put someone on her, hack into her computer, but if I want up-to-the-minute intel on what she's doing, who she's talking to, what she's ready to print, when she's ready to print... It's nice having a friend in the NSA, isn't it? <laughs> friend might be putting it strongly. We will do your bidding. Listen in on Lillian. Say thank you. Thank you. When it fails, we'll be left with one option. And one option only. I am not you, Dad. In my world, if someone's in your way, you outthink them. You don't end them. It's not who I am. You see what she did there, Jake? As she referred to her world like it's something different from ours. It's as if she's forgotten that we're her family and this is her home. We'll listen in on your reporter, Olivia. Do you that favor. But when you reach the bottom of your bag of tricks, the ones that you use in your world, so you're still able to sleep at night and Andrew is still talking and the world is about to end and there's no time left to stop it, don't say, I didn't warn you. I can't believe Fitz is doing this. He is. And you can't be smiling. You can't be giddy and empathetic. Yesterday my face was dangling above a wood chipper and now Fitz is taking the fall for all of us. Forgive me, I'm giddy. What? Just plugged into a call between Lillian and her editor. They've landed on a title for the Times article. Go on. Melly Grant, one affair, many lies. But that means... The story shifted. It's not about West Angola anymore. Which means someone made a deal. 